morning everybody, this is Steve at the Whirly Bugger. February 15th, middle of the month. Standing here right below the Irene Reinhardt boat launch. As you can see, a little bit of snow around. Got a little flurry of white powder last night dumped in the middle of the night which is good here in the valley so they have the moisture we, can just, we got a i don't know we got maybe a half inch that's accumulated so that means in the higher elevations they got more which is great keep it coming we need it desperately fill those reservoirs up so we got some Good summer fishing, good flow, good safe water temperatures for uh, our trout and salmon species. So today just standing here and you can see, we had a lot of trouble here last fall and you can see the pilings out there in those big ripples where the water's boiling and that's why it is boiling because there's structure in there so there used to be an old bridge here at one time and they took out as much of it i'm sure as possible and you know unfortunately some of the other structure was left you know in the river and creates a boating hazard so got to be really careful in low low water Very easy to get turned around, get sideways there, and run into some problems. But you can see the river's in really good shape. It's cold this morning. The water temperature, taking it right now here. About 35 degrees, 34.9. So Remember, we need that water consistently about 42 before we start seeing squalas, but that doesn't mean that the fish are not eating. Of course they are. You're going to want to, if you are going to fish, you're going to want to target those warmer parts of the day. So, you know, don't worry. I mean, if you want to be out on the river early, there's absolutely, go for it, you know. I'm not saying that you won't catch a fish, you know, fish are fish, but they're going to be most active during the warmest parts of the day, that swing. So, as the air temperature warms, it just needs to go up a couple of degrees, the fish will turn on, and it varies day to day, this time of year. So, that swing starts down, and it hits the curve, and it starts dropping you know then typically the the bite starts getting slower and slower for the day so but lots of rewards in fishing this time of year lots of solitude separates the diehards so there's a little bit more snow forecasted which is great great news remember february march and april are are the big snow accumulation months for the Cascades so I mean even though we got snow here in the valley this isn't going to stay around depending on how warm it gets today it's only supposed to be like 38 you know it'll it'll stay around but as soon as it warms up gets in the 40s you know it'll melt go into the into the aquifer into the ground and recharge some of that so all in all, great news, great to see. So you can see that the river's got plenty of water in it. I mean, even though it's, you know, it's in great shape. And, and yes, it's, it's weightable for those without boats, but you still like, you know, you're not, you're not gonna wade across right there. You still have to pick your spots. And the river is extremely slippery. So if you are wading, especially this time of year with lower water temperatures, it's a great idea to have a staff, you know, 
and also spike boots you know that's going to give you more traction and you know make sure that you're safe when you're crossing if you fall in you know at 35 degrees you know it could be a bad situation so and even if you don't carry a staff with you you know pick up a nice strong stick you know along the bank before crossing you know and since we are you know the middle of february here you know things are starting to happen within the river you know we're seeing bugs starting to starting to move around even though low water temperatures you know they're starting to form and get ready and just kind of show you how you investigate that so all i got to do is kick over a few rocks do a little investigating and you'll find I mean, one of the biggest questions i get in the fly shop on a daily basis is what are the fish eating? So, in order to find that out, you got to do some homework. Here we have some March brown nymphs already starting to form. We're getting ready to hatch. So there you have it, a March brown nymph. What, what fly could you think of that would imitate that? What comes to mind? For me, good old pheasant tail. Pretty, pretty darn good fly. Especially for those on foot, you know, or even if you're in a boat, it's good to anchor, get out, pick some rocks over. Really a good way to learn migration routes, you know, with bugs, because they're not everywhere. Okay, so here you go. Just another little bit of homework. Just going along the bank here. Kicking over some rocks. This, this is another great way to learn how to Fish the river, get to know more about your fishery and what what you need rather than relying on somebody else telling you what you need. So here's a squall in them. Right along the banks here. So you just walk along the edges and find the routes. It's just like anything. You know, they travel in numbers. The greater the numbers, the more will make it to the edges. Mother nature's mother nature. It doesn't matter whether it's stonefly nymphs or some other animal. Their strength in numbers, traveling in numbers, guarantees that there will be survival. You now just turn over you know, real loose boulders, you know? Stuff that's not embedded in the, in the substrate of the river, you know? And stuff that's, that's close to the edges. This is, this is how you'll find insects, find what's going on. And then when you find that, you find the migratory route, right? So, if stoneflies are going to be in close next to the edges and there's large groups of them in certain spots. That's what the trout are going to be keyed in on, on those spots. The, the, trout, the trout are never too far away from where the food is. Keep that in mind too. They're just like any other animal, you know, they, they choose the path of least resistance. You know for their migration they want it as easy as possible as well you know so there's a lot to think of you know when you're when you start in in your fly fishing career and you've been doing it for 50 years one of the uh, 
the fun things about the sport is all the learning that's involved. So if you're a person that loves a challenge, loves to learn new and exciting things every day, then, you know, you're gonna love the sport of fly fishing. Keep an eye on those gauges, especially this time of year. As we get more moisture, we get more snow. You know, in the in the low-lying hills, if we get you know, if we get adequate snow in the hills and then it warms up or we get rain on top of that, of course that's gonna drive that's gonna drive water flows up. Keep in mind, we're not gonna do big water releases or trying to fill those reservoirs up on Snoqualmie Pass, so so there's adequate water for the summer for irrigation needs. The farmers really got to be sweating it. So if you're a farmer, rancher, orchardist, yeah, you have to really be wondering if you're going to have enough water. So if you have any uh, questions, I always call the fly shop. Just a quick reminder. Uh, we are closed on Sundays again now, so still uh, you know lack of help, you know, to help out in the fly shop. Con contact the fly shop if you have any questions regarding the river or any of the other fisheries. We'll do our best to answer them for you. Until well, then, everybody have a great weekend. And get to tying your squalas. You're going to need them very, very soon.